in a position or that might individual. take the firearms first and then go to court because that's another system because a lot of times by the time you go to court it takes so long to go to court to get the due process procedures uh, i like taking the guns early like in this crazy man's case that just took place in florida he had a lot of firearms they saw everything to go to court would have taken a long time so you could do exactly what you're saying but take the guns first go through due process second. Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to the Liberty Report. With me today is Daniel McAdams. Daniel, good to see you. Good to have you back, Dr. Paul. Oh, very good. It's good to be back and ready and raring to go. <laughs> Wish we had some very good news for everybody, but we're going to be talking about a problem that came to our attention. We've been talking about school shootings and media is, you know, engulfed with it. But there was a major meeting yesterday, uh, you know, at the White House. And, uh, and this, the president was there, of course, and he had significant Republicans and significant Democrats. So it was bipartisan, so you can expect our problems to be solved, because as soon as they get together, they come together, and liberty is always promoted uh, when it's bipartisan. Being facetious, obviously, because I think that is the detriment of the country, is too many things are bipartisan, and too often they agree to making things worse, whether it's spending, going to war, or printing more money. Uh, this bipartisanship uh, is an endorsement of a bad philosophy, and I think that's what happened uh, yesterday. But uh, I think the shocker was uh, the president uh, came down on the side of, uh, of more regulation. I, I, I believe he's contradicting what he alluded to in his campaign. And, and uh, he was uh, endorsed by the NRA, I believe. And all of a sudden, he's taking on the NRA, conservatives, the Second Amendment. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's pre pretty amazing. I cannot see how this is a strategically beneficial move for him. And I think he's wrong politically and constitutionally uh, to say that uh, this is a reason why we have to have more regulations. Because sometimes there are bad things that happen. Matter of fact, bad things all seem to happen frequently. But putting this in perspective, this isn't, an, an, it's not like there's an epidemic that we went through, but there's an, there's a, a epidemic of uh, the people who take advantage of this because uh, when people die, it's very easy to become very emotional and not objective. And, uh, and, and when it comes to guns in schools, I think what happens, it really brings out the authoritarian demagogues. Any chance they have to have an answer to, uh, to a problem with more authoritarianism, more government, less liberty, I think this uh, fits that category. And there sure were a lot of gasps when he was sitting there. Here's Feinstein on one side, Cornyn from Texas on the other. And he says, you got to get the guns first. Grab the guns first, then we'll worry about due process later. And uh, Feinstein, of course, was giddy. Uh, she was giggling. She was thrilled. Uh, Cornyn had a pretty stone face, and he's not exactly the most conservative. Uh, now, you could say this was kind of a gaffe. He shot from the hip his uh, instincts, uh, take the guns first, uh, due process later. But even if it was a, shoot, a, sh a shot from the hip, even if it was him thinking outside, his mouth running before his brain was running, it does show something that I think you've said all along, which are his instincts. He has authoritarian instincts. Yeah, and, and you know, Senator Ben Sass brought that up t to him. He confronted him. He didn't back down. And, of course, he cha has challenged the president before. But I think his short statement that he made is worth reading because uh, he, he was uh, confronting the president uh, right to his face. And this is what uh, Senator Sass said. He said, quote, strong leaders don't automatically agree with the last thing that was said to them. <laughs> we have the Second Amendment and due process of law for a reason. We're not ditching any constitutional protection simply because the last person the president talked to today doesn't like them. Now, I think the president's been, uh, people have accused him of that in the past, but this is, this is, this is pretty serious and he, he really catches them here. But um, it's, it's uh, t to me, sad that it works that way. He doesn't come from a uh, systematic, fundamental belief in anything, you know. <laughs> it's 
all over the place, and it can be both places too. You know, have it one day one way, one day the next day, and now here's another flip flop on him. Uh, it's interesting uh, to see what this does. Uh, you know, he's already announced he wants to be president for another seven years, so uh, I, I can't uh, imagine this won't start nibbling away at some of the people that really got excited about him with his populism. Yeah, you, you mentioned even early on the political down, downside of this. I can't imagine. You've got the, you know, the left is, is seethes with hatred toward him. And, and unfortunately, in many cases, irrational hatred because they don't even talk about his policies. They don't like his hair. They don't like the way he looks. They think that Russia is, you know, under his bed or something. Uh, they seethe with hatred. The moderate, so-called moderates hate him. A lot of the neocons hate him. The Bill Crystal types hate him. He's got a group of, you know, what Hillary called the deplorables, and he's been their champion, and they've, they've been attracted, and they like guns. Yes. Uh, and they're law-abiding people for the most part, too. So undermining that base is politically insane. And they touched on several specifics, you know, the assault weapons ban uh, and uh, this whole idea that you take your guns first and due process comes <laughs> later. That, that is something else. And, you know, when, when he made that statement, it reminded me of how the system has worked. What about the NDAA? The, this authority that's been around, and, and Trump didn't invent it. Yeah. You know, this was in the Bush era, the NDAA. You arrest people, and, and, uh, and then Obama extended that. You can kill Americans, assassinate Americans, and deal with the due process later. Uh, so, and sometimes people get arrested, and if you happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time, and you don't get charged, and you don't get a trial, you can get put in prison in Guantanamo or some other place, you know, for life, yeah. essentially. So it, th that attitude is very bad, and it's, a, it's the rejection of the principle that the founding fathers tried to give us regarding guns and, and defending ourselves. And they, were, they, didn't, they weren't wishy-washy. Sometimes liberals will try to say, well, the Second Amendment means that the militia is allowed to own guns which is a bunch of baloney. It, people, it says the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Yeah. The purpose being so that you can participate in a militia which provides for your safety and security in a local way. But uh, I think um, there's been court cases that sort of has refuted that and say it is an individual liberty. But uh, when you come along and, and get people ready to write these regulations, I think they forget this. And uh, it'll be uh, uh, sad if they have an erosion of that and going back to this thing where uh, they're going to regulate one type of gun without really dealing with the issue of whether or not the people have a right to defend themselves. Yeah, you know, it's, it's funny, actually, because ironically, Trump was right. Uh, due process, who cares about due process? And you're right, the NDAA is an example. FISA is an example. There's no due process. They just vacuum up all of our communications. How many other examples? So, you know, ironically, he is right. The due process, who cares about it? it he also had a statement about, uh, what about this thing about uh, the police? The cops have the right to stretch the law? Yeah. That, that, of course, it really invites a lot of problems, too. We already have those kinds of problems, and I think he suggested that the police should have leeway above and beyond what the law gives them to take away people's guns if they think that person is a bad person. Yeah. So that is dangerous. You know, I think the other assumption is that the big picture is uh, who's responsible for safety. And our country has gotten to the point where it's the government's job to make us safe and secure, that you have a safety net and you are protected. There's a policeman on every corner <laughs> and we're all going to be safe and se secure. But, you know, if you carry that through, and many of them do, just think of how many things that they have on their plate. Because uh, it, it looks to me like um, there's not the, the crisis that we have is serious and you can't you can't belittle it. But compared to even assaults and killing in schools, it hasn't been getting worse. Yeah, and this is something that's interesting. This came out uh, just a couple of days ago, February 26th. It's a study by James Allen Fox, who's a professor of criminology, law, and public policy at Northeastern University. And he just simply looked at statistics. Uh, and he gave a list, you can, pe people can look it up, a list of where he went for statistics. And he discovered that uh, school shootings have actually been on a steady decline since the 1990s. So there's a lot of hype in the press, you know, for a, for a reason, for propaganda reason. But he said there, four times the number of children were killed in schools in the early 90s 
than are killed now in schools. And he also said he also found that more kids are killed in bicycle accidents and pool drownings than shooting. So this is being exploited. And there was no increase when assault weapons were legalized. Yeah, because uh, uh, Columbine, I guess, was when the assault weapons were uh, were illegal. And it didn't have any effect. The whole thing. But uh, it's Pandora's box, really, is what they open up when government's there to make us safe and secure. Um, what, what if you come up with a statistic to show that uh, a, a lot of people get killed when they drive their automobiles over 60 miles an hour, yeah. in a theoretical sense? Uh, if that were the case, why wouldn't the answer be to put a governor, a governor on the car? Yeah. Don't let anybody drive over 60 miles an hour. <laughs> By that time, the people would probably rebel. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that, that's going too Especially far. Especially in Texas. We, we don't, I don't <laughs> think we need that much safety around here. But there are, are, there are so many things that government d does get involved in. You know, they're always involved in nutritional advice. And it's always a disaster. Yeah. You know, since the uh, Food and Drug Administration been around, you know, uh, we've had worse foods put on the marketplace. And it's the private market, the holistic type uh, people who introduces the notions to some of the nutritional product. What if, what if they decided uh, sugar was bad for us? Which for some people, it's bad for us. But what would we? What do we do? We give protectionism to sugar, so that we keep the cheap sugar out, <laughs> and, and we get in there. We get involved in the sugar business, and then a lot of people suffer the consequences. There are so many things that uh, if, if they were. In, I hate to mention they ought to be consistent. No, I don't want them to be consistent. They're liable to be consistent. Yeah. They, oh, we have a lot more work to do, so therefore we have to have more and more regulation. Here they're saying that we have this problem. It's emotional. It's horrible. We need more regulations that's going to solve the problem. And I think my bottom line is if you resort to regulations, you'll probably create more problems. You'll undermine liberties, and you, you will not solve the problem of the shootings. Your statistical uh, report there, I think, verifies that. And Professor Fox is interesting because he did this study. Uh, you read what he wrote. He's not against gun control. Matter of fact, he's in favor of gun control. He strikes me as kind of a typical liberal professor. Uh, but here's what he said. He, he's in favor of gun control, but he says... In these measures, they will not pre uh, pre prevent school shootings, these kind of uh, measures that they're talking about, because they're already very, very rare. He says this kind of school shooting, these mass shootings, are so rare that these additional measures won't do anything to prevent them. I can't help but think that it's much more difficult to provide uh, safety uh, in a in a school, the bigger it is, I think, the more difficult it is. You know, and, and the schools are so big and gigantic, and just uh, and I don't know whether it could be verified by uh, by statistics, but I would think a school that has 300 people uh, would be easier to manage than one that has 3,000. Yeah. Uh, I, I think if you have 300, everybody knows everybody by their first name. And uh, of course, the uh, the other example uh, when it comes to schools is you know uh, private schools. Uh, you don't read or hear about this, and uh, uh, of course, uh, some people argue that uh, when you put up a sign, it's a gun-free zone, mm -hmm. that that might motivate them. I, I never know whether they have proof of that, but it certainly looks that way, that uh, usually uh, when there's no guns, uh, we, we end up seeing some of these mass shootings. But uh, I, I think it's uh, tragic that this happens because uh, I happen to believe that some, uh, some of the uh, private industries and private schools and all, uh, it's not like they don't care. They usually have some type of protection you know, that they can provide. So even, uh, I was just sort of pondering the thought, what if you did have a big school? And uh, instead of depending on the sheriffs, that uh, you wonder, you know, are they qualified and will they really, you know, defend the kids and this sort of thing. What if you hired, what if there were private groups to go in there? Uh, they do it for industries yeah. and, and they do a pretty good job. I, I would visualize if you had a private uh, security force and they were responsible for the security of, uh, of these schools that they could hit, uh, they would be rewarded. You know, they're getting paid to do it, and maybe uh, more people would want them, and they would have a strong motivation. Uh, but uh, I, I don't think we're on the move. You know, it's likely to happen, but I think it's uh, worth thinking about because, uh, you know, private industry a lot of times uh, can do a better job than, uh, than the bureaucrats, and certainly 
the bureaucrat who wants more laws. I just don't think that's the answer, especially when it so explicitly violates one of the most straightforward amendments we have <laughs> to the Constitution. They just want to throw this throw this out. But uh, this is ch this is real challenging because I you know a few years ago I was under the impression that uh, you know the Democrats don't even talk about guns anymore because they always lose the fight, and then all of a sudden it's, it's uh, up front. And uh, it, it's, a, it's a big issue uh, again, but what did we see in the papers after this happened when, when the dust settled for about one day, then they had a gun show or a, a gun store and more people there than ever. Oh, yeah. And yet what were you hearing on TV? 78% of the American people want more controls and get rid of the guns and more registration, which was more of that propaganda, you know, by the far left. And uh, it, it had nothing to do with really caring. And my other argument that we've made before, if they really care about the children, uh, they would think about how many children die at the hands of our foreign policy, whether it's the drones and the bombs we drop on them or the sanctions that we put on them. I mean, uh, that, that is what they would have to care about if they really care, care about children who suffer the consequence. And those who are suffering the consequence of guns, guns and bullets and bombs, government. Yeah. So, uh, and if you compare that to a decreasing amount of school violence here locally, uh, then the real problem is uh, so often government guns uh, when you look at it as a worldwide event. And, you know, the other proposal now is to prohibit uh, those uh, between 18 and 21 years of age from purchasing uh, what they call assault rifles, just high, high, high capacity rifles. Uh, but here again, Professor Fox says, in the past 35 years, there have been only five cases where someone between the age of 18 and 21 used an assault rifle in a mass shooting. So very, very rare, 35 years, only five cases. Uh, you know, our, our old uh, co-worker, Penny Langford, posted something on Facebook today, and she pointed out, if you do this, you're going to prevent every young gal on a college campus who may want to have a handgun to protect herself uh, from having it, from having a gun. And how vulnerable if someone who's trained, someone who can protect themselves, uh, that seems a, a very, very unfair thing to do. Yeah, they talk about the equalizer for women. You know, a little pistol in their purse certainly uh, makes them an equalizer to some thugs on, on the street. Yeah. So I want to thank everybody for tuning in today to the Liberty Report. I imagine this issue will be around for a while. I think it has to be dissected out in a practical manner, whether what the stories and the statistics you hear are correct, and also to look at it in a, in a practical way of do more regulations really help, and also in, in the area of rights. Who, who has a right to own a gun and protect themselves, and does it help to undermine that right? Obviously not. I think the founders were right, you know, uh, the uh, right to own and use a weapon, that right should not be infringed. And I believe the country would be better off, and the founders certainly believed that uh, that would be the case, and that's why they gave us the Second Amendment. I want to thank everybody for tuning in today to the Liberty Report. Please come back soon.